Hey there, and welcome back to Cursed Seeds, an educational monster train series where we struggle through the toughest challenges around. This was an interesting one submitted to me that I really wanted to just tackle quickly. It's a little out of order. I have other things that were submitted much earlier than this that I really should be recording instead, but uh, it just stood out to me because there were Honestly, what got me is that there are a lot of people talking on my Discord server in spoiler chat, and I'm not clicking any of the spoilers, which got me really, really interested in whatever the heck this run is. So, yeah, I, I don't even know what to expect here. Now, we do have three losses on the board. Maybe that explains some of that discussion. I suppose we'll have to see. A couple of these are pretty early. One of these is mm, Arcus, maybe, or Fell, I guess, whichever, Ring 6-ish, 15k, maybe that's Ring 7. I can never tell, right? Because some of this depends on your shard count, some of this depends on other factors as well, how much damage you did to a boss before passing away, things like that. But uh, the other thing that's worth noting about this run is that it's sentient with Frozen Lance. I don't normally consider this a, bla a bad a blad, a bad clan combo. And the reason why is because, well, you could always stick Cultivating Sentient in front of, I don't know, something like a Sweeper, right? And as long as you see something that scales, you can make this work. It could be like a Nameless Siren Infusion or any Siren Infusion. But at the same time, I could definitely see this struggling if you miss everything. When you see a decent clan combo like this get submitted with three losses on the board, it probably does miss everything. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. But uh, anyway, let me give you a brief explanation of what's going on in case you're joining us for the first time. So basically what's happening here is I am playing viewer submitted runs. So if you're playing Covenant 25 Monster Train with no mutators and you struggle with a run or you find a run that's just particularly awesome for one reason uh, or another, you can send it my way. Basically go to your run summary. There's a generate challenge button. You click that, it generates a three word combo similar to what you see at the top of the screen here uh, and you can send it my way and I'll play it for you on the channel. And now I will specify the best place to send it for, to me is actually on my Discord server. If you, You'll notice this if you go to my main channel page, top right of the channel page, and you will see it there. That's the link that gets you in there. There's a, a channel specifically for this that I people submit things to. And one of the nice things about it is, even if it takes me a few weeks or longer to get to a run... Uh, people will play it, right? Other people will try it out and will let you know what their thoughts are. This can get you some more immediate feedback because everyone's kind of there to do the same thing, right? So uh, that's my general suggestion. You can also, of course, if you just want to get it to me and you don't really care about all the other business, you can put it in a YouTube comment. You can send it to me however you can get it to me, right? I've, I've gotten some of these by email. So uh, truly, whatever works. But, but yeah, so we're currently on a 55 win streak on this particular series, looking pretty decent on it. I think we're still currently on, I think I've only lost twice on this particular series. So it's pretty decent, honestly. It can definitely happen though. And I, you know what? I expect it to happen eventually, pretty soon. You keep submitting and going through these cursed seeds. Eventually we're going to find the one that gets me. But, but yeah. So that's pretty much all I've got to you, tell you. Our previous one, I didn't even explain what it was. Goodness, it was all stats, no scaling. We had a Shadow Siege infused into a multi-striking plus 25 Horned Warrior. We had three of them that I just spammed. We hidden passage to the floor together. It gets there. It's a little sketchy, a little scary, but we made it work. There was a lightstone casing minus two, minus one holdover inferno, which was nuts. I basically used that to clear waves and then had the Horn Warriors pre-relentless divinity before they passed away. We also had a minus one, minus one double stack void binding that once we got it positioned, I basically just slammed that. The idea being this thing would hold it out for relentless, right? And it would also provide some measure of limited but possible scaling. A pretty crazy run. I don't see something like that very often. It was genuinely a race to the finish. So, 
Uh, but yes, let's go ahead and get this run started. So as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's see what we get today. Yeah, let's check it out. All right, hopefully you're all doing well today. I'm doing A-OK, -okay. nothing too crazy to report. I wanted to record a lot more today than I did. Obviously, this is like the first one I'm recording, so I'm not making a lot of progress here, but all good. Looking forward to getting at least something done. I had this weird situation where like every single one of my D&D sessions this week got canceled or rearranged or something. And I just, everyone's chattering away in their respective discord servers like "Ooh, when do we reschedule this for it i'm just like just let me know i'm con I, i'm confused now there's just so many things possibly going on at any given time so i guess we'll see what happens uh some of those almost certainly will not make it to rescheduling and that's okay it happens but but yeah let's play some monster train instead as before we are default awoken default stygian it's a fine clan combo and we have a pretty good good opener which leads me to believe something about this is misleading. We're facing Plating Seal Daedalus, Rage Fell, Chased Seraph with Razor Sharp Edge, Mollusk Mage, and Wildwood Custodian. While the Mollusk Mage and Wildwood Custodian are not particularly good, I do think Razor Sharp's excellent, one of the best possible scaling options here. So I am pretty pleased with that. Yeah. Mollusk Mage will also be fine. We have Frozen Lances, Restores, it's something. I'm going to at least jam them on the floor, but I guess we'll find out if there's any room. Let's see. Temples today are two, four, six, seven. So four temples, not bad. Removal dupe on Steel Side on eight is pretty good. It's a good Steel Shop on seven. Vortex Caverns competes with a eh, kind of meh Magic Shop. Higher Remains and Money. The removal dupe with caverns on six. Magic shop competes. No steel on six. Good to know. Let's see. Ring five has a steel shop. It's okay. Again, it's money and health. That might be relevant. I don't know. It depends on how bad you really want the steel shop, I guess. But we've also got a trinket shop with vortex and cave. That's a pretty good trinket shop if we have money. There's a hoard in the middle, so there's no extra money there. Another steel shop on four. It means we don't get a double early, although there is a lack of a magic shop, so we do see double magics early. Good to know. The steel shop on four has a Stygian banner vortex. Pretty solid. Nothing too crazy there. Random hell vent with a health on three. Magic magic early. You've got an awoken banner on two. Steel shop has a Stygian banner. Sure. Now, Magic Shop, Steel Shop, I don't know. The main thing to keep in mind, though, is that we do have a Razor Sharp Edge. Hunting a holdover for that, or at least putting a minus one in it with a spell chain prior to like a well, X5 or something would be really good. So I guess it's going to depend on the banner situation. The thing is, is that I don't normally, like I'm, having not even looked at what sentient we have yet i normally try to get some kind of an awoken unit if i have a scaling option like this right because think about it S sirens whatever they're all very multi-strike dependent what happens if you miss all the multi-strikes right so you can't you can't walk into this thinking ah well obviously i'm gonna go to the steel shop because maybe i go to this magic shop look take some minus ones that are guaranteed value right you always see them and then maybe hit a holdover and then if I see a sweeper or a an animus of will, we can pop off with that. I don't need to go too crazy otherwise. So a lot of good options there. The other thing to keep in mind is that Sendian is very bad in the early game. Like, let me look ahead. Where do people die? Deaths on ring four. Two deaths on ring four, one death on ring six. Okay, so the ring four death is interesting. Normally, if Sentient makes it past Ring 3, you're probably going to make it through Ring 4. That could be an example of taking too many shards or something. It's hard to say. The Ring 6, though, means you just you you weren't going to beat Seraph. You were missing the, missing the mark somehow. Not doing enough damage, poor survivability, whatever. You Your stats are garbage or something. So I guess we'll see. But, you know, just off the cuff with no other information, this magic shop looks pretty good, right? I have a holdover option that's really powerful. Anyway, let's look at this. We have a horde first. I'm going to click on Pyrewall because, of course, I am. Titan's Claws may as well not exist right now. Pyrewall lets us be a little aggro early, which I like. 
Ah, no cultivating. This might be an interesting challenge for folks. Explosive is bad. I don't want it. Spikes is not particularly excellent, but spikes plus a couple razor sharps in front, and this thing can actually do some work. If I put a... What is it? If I put a Mollusk Mage behind it, we can keep it topped up pretty well. I'll take spikes. I don't love the idea of spikes in the chase, though. That's not, not great, but... We don't, maybe we'll pivot. The ideal case here would be spikes here and then we see cultivating on ring four. That's the ideal case. I, I, I don't click, I'm not gonna click explosive, come on. That would be ridiculous here. I don't care if like, oh yeah, restores. We have nothing in this run that suggests for us to click explosive. I honestly don't think there is a reason to ever click explosive full stop, so. Okay, Mark of Invasion is excellent. I'm happy to take this. I do need to be careful with Sentient's health, but we have a lot of tools to answer this, I think. So I'm just gonna take cash and be cool with it. It's all good. If I leak something, it's just Pyrewall, right? Now I can do, for instance, this is gonna be an interesting one. We do Sentient up top. I'll put the Custodian down. I might as well. I'm going to Razor Sharp Sentient here. And I will take some some health back, one health back. It's a lot of damage to take randomly, I'll admit, but it's okay. We're going to click the Frozen Lance here because I think it's important. I do want to save space for Mollusk Mage, so I think the actual play here is to Razor Sharp offensively on this Foot Soldier. Right, so having damage on Sentient is excellent because she kills the clergyman with, with her spikes. And then she attacks the collector. If I razor sharp offensively here, no risk from this next turn. We're guaranteed to see restores and mollusk mages and top her back up. So it should be free. Yeah, you just drop mollusk mage here and then we have a fully topped off Sentient, great news, excellent. If I leak that thing, I don't care, all good, cool. And then I am just gonna play the other Mollusk Mage here because I think it's smart. I could just Frozen Lance and save all the health in the world, which I think is pretty cool, I'll do that. Now drawing three there, I'll see another one probably, right? Yeah, nailed it, cool. And now what we do is we put this Razor Sharp in the back just so that we're scaling something into Relentless. We have no spikes to worry about. We easy win this. The presence of Razor Sharp Edge really swings this in a big way. We just have so much more damage than this floor is normally expecting. It's the same reason like Ritual of Battle Opener is strong, right? Same exact deal. Glimmer is awesome. Glimmer is going to be better than Wildwood Sap, although Wildwood Sap will help us into... Daedalus? Yeah, Glimmer takes a plus 30 really well, though, is my main thought process here. I don't need third Razor Sharp, fortunately. We have it. I mean, we have the offensive scaling. You know, this makes me really concerned about what is the thing that makes this run hard, right? I could have imagined this being very difficult if it were just, what, no multi-strike and then you never see Razor Sharp Ed? What do you even do? I mean, at that point, you just inch, you inchworm along and hope for the best. But with the razor sharp openers, I feel pretty confident. All you've got to do is what? Show me an animus of will. I mean, I'm really tempted to go to that awoken banner. You see an animus of will and we pop off here. That would be pretty cool. I think it's glimmer, right? Plus 30, 10 and piercing. All of them are good. Maybe I leverage mollusk mage somehow. Unlikely, but it's possible. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. Ugh, Mollus Mage Cuddle Hex to pay out for Titan's Claws. Absolutely not. Titan's Gratitude, I'll just skip it for money. Okay, we're loaded on cash, took no damage. I am gonna go for the holdover here? I don't know. Like, the Steel Shop is great and all, but I don't have an endless pick. If there were, like, a unit trial here and I had a shark walking into this, I'd feel a little different, but I just... I don't see how it's not Magic Shop when you have such a good holdover target. Let me think about this more objectively. Minus one's also excellent, we'll take. 
both minus ones get picked. Even if I see no holdover and it's spell chain, I could dupe that on ring two, three here and that's enough. I think the Awoken banner is so much stronger and I at least have some direction for the magic shop, right? Whereas, what if you go to the steel shop and it's guard of the unnamed, what else would it, a guard of the unnamed and icy sillophyte, right? What are you going to do? Take icy sillophyte in this position? I mean, I would, honestly. I'm trying to think of a worse combo. A good example might be... Yeah, you see both sharks, but you don't see a, an endless. I'm going to go to this magic shop. I think it's correct. I can imagine completely dead ring twos. I can't imagine completely dead ring twos on the left. Move consume. That is pointless. 20 consume. I don't mind. I'm probably purchasing that. Let's briefly look at this temple. Minus two. No good targets. A purge present as well. Let's see what the banner is here. Interesting. Huh. Now here's the real thought. This is an interesting one. If I had Cultivating Sentient here, I think Animus of Will is an easy pick. What if I never see Cultivating Sentient though? Animus of Will is a big risk then. How do I scale it? I have to play mid floor, hope for the best. Good, it has enough hits to win, but it's risky, right? Here's the alternative, Thorned Hollow. Thorned Hollow is very confidently powerful into the early game. Thorned Hollow guarantees, I, you know, basically Thorned Hollow and you stick the Mollus Mages behind him, guarantees you escape Daedalus, 100%. I don't have anything that really points me to Thorned Hollow right now other than possible fear, right? Fear points me to him. No Steel Shop in the Ring 3, which makes the Animus risky because I can't buff her attack, or I mean her health. She gets one razor sharp and then I'm doing 39 to the floor and that's it. It's not a lot. Be relying on like a steel enhancer draft or something. Thorned Hollow, however, extremely confident. I have a glimmer. I could even put like a Wildwood Custodian infusion in him, which is actually pretty decent just to have it. I mean, Edge Prior is the ideal because you get a free proc, but still, free card draw is pretty good. What if I do this? It is chased. Now, we do have the ability to bait. I put Sentient on a different floor. I also could just non-commit to this guy, take him, get through ring three, and hopefully see something else. Maybe we go to the Stygian banner on ring four with the Steel Shop. I think that is going to happen, right? I'm going to the steel shop on ring four, see a Stygian banner. Maybe it's a shark. Maybe it's a siren. Maybe there's a multi-strike. I don't know. I have to imagine if there's a multi-strike in here that's functional and usable. I don't see how these people would have lost this run, but you know, I'm a, there's to some extent the run is cursed. Therefore, I assume the worst whether or not it's applicable. I don't know. But if three people lost, well, I don't know. I think Thorned Hollow is the safest pick here. There's nothing that really makes me feel like this can be a reasonable end game solution, but it definitely solves the now in kind of a big way. This is a difficult decision, by the way. I think this is much easier if you have cultivating, but the lack of like chase somewhat scares me, but I think Thorned Hollow still just provides so much more confidence. Maybe I can give, maybe if I find a multi-strike, I put it in him and I find Gnarled Root and we have a crazy run. I think I'm going to go with Thorn Hollow because I'm just not confident that 39 damage plus Sentient in front gets me out of Daedalus. Even at 10 shards here, if I take nothing else, I just don't think it gets me out. All right, we'll, we'll do Thorn Hollow. We'll do Thorned Hollow here. That was a very difficult decision that I would like to just make sure everyone understands. We're going to minus one a Razor Sharp. Make them cheap. It's good. I'm going to 20 consume a Frozen Lance. Of course, we spin this. I get the holdover. Now, here's the real question. With a Thorned Hollow, what if I hold over the Glimmer instead? What are my next temples? Four, six, seven... A lot of opportunities to see something good. 
a lot of, and it's really strong right now. What if I just do Thorn Hollow and both Mollusk Mages behind him as my top floor? And then we just slam, what is that, 22 damage glimmers to floors? That softens heavies. And procs, I mean, I think it's going to be this. We'll see the plus 30 or the 10 in piercing later, most likely. It's weird how we've pivoted a little bit, having seen all of the options and really considered them. Thorn Hollow, not a card I think I would have anticipated wanting here, but after reasoning through my state, I think I'm happy with this choice. We're going to hold over Glimmer. I'm going to put the other minus one in the Razor Sharp here. We're going to save that slot on Glimmer. Plus 10. I'm going to save my money here, I think. Yeah, I'll save it for some minus ones or something. Now the question then becomes, do I do anything at this trinket shot, at this temple? Minus two. If there were a plus 30 here, this would be killer good, but I could purge a frozen lance maybe. I'm a little leery about investing here. Every 10 shards makes Daedalus that scarier. Let's just save here and move on. I feel like we at least got enough value here that we're okay. Spikes, see like Spikes doesn't scare me here. Because one Pyre Wall, two Thorned Hollow. Stentian can come live somewhere. I don't know. Sure. I don't see a reason not to put her downstairs. Thorned Hollow upstairs. It's good. I may as well drop in Mr. Train Steward here. Let's avoid incanting this guy too much. Well... I am going to play it. I think a train steward does more on middle. Yeah, okay, fine. Cool. Mollusk Mage, drop in the friend. Let's get some spikes upstairs. Good. All right. This guy's probably leaking. I don't think there's really a way around it. Mollusk Mage down. It's good. Let's click the restore here. I'm going to put a razor sharp down. These, these Mollusk Mages do pass away, sadly because they're attacking into spikes, which is unfortunate. With any luck, though, this gets us out of here still. I'll play the Wildwood Custodian. I'm gonna blast the guy in front here. I will play the Razor Sharp. I'll regenerate. It's good, okay. Okay, I think our man upstairs easy beats. With this many stats, easy beats, my friend. 100%, no chance. I think the regen is actually stronger here than the glimmer, so we chill. I didn't have the mollusk me just survive. So, yeah, we're actually just super fine. Thank you, Mr. Mollusk Mage. Extremely cool. Or uh, rather, really, thank you, Thorned Hollow. A very confident victory in the ring, too, at least. Restoration detonation. An extra heal. This is good because I could tendon piercing this and put it on the sentient or something. It's a good, even if I just put plus tens in it, it's nice to have that. I'm leaning that way. And I'm going to grab Flash Freeze because I want, want a ping, 100%. That also helps immensely against, what is it? Daedalus. Frostbite, that's like 50 damage over the turns. So, now do I go to the Stygian banner? Yes, I think I do want to try to plan for possibly something behind Sentient. Could be anything, really. I also don't think I have a great Hellvent target. It's just what another... Razor Sharp Edge, I guess. Yeah, we'll go right. We haven't taken any damage. I don't need that health. We'll look at this Magic Shop, see what we have. Cool. Permafrost. Not a big deal. A minus one plus ten on a Restore is pretty universally good. Icy Silophyte? Rough. You see, like, from this position, I don't actually think that adds anything. I don't because I don't have cultivating and I might never see it. I don't have multi strikes. I might never see them. This is just this is a card I grab when I already have a plan looking for a vessel for that plan, right? I have the draft with Dark Calling Rector and I just hey, you know what Icy Silvite she'll do or something like that. Guard of the Unnamed does actually nothing. I would genuinely prefer just putting Mollusk Mage's infusion inside of Thorned Hollow or Wildwood Custodian. The armor is not necessary. We're going to skip this. That's a tragedy. 
That is unfortunate. I'm gonna take some minus ones. I think they're good. I'm gonna take like a minus one plus 10 restore because that seems good to me. Make these a little better. Permafrost, I don't have one I care about. We just skip it. 20 consume another frozen lance, sure. Happy to do it. I will just make things cheaper. Like restoration detonation can now cost zero. That's cool. And I sit, I'm gonna look at the caverns here. Oh, buddy, rail spikes. Now, if I had seen these rail spikes prior to taking that 20 consume, might actually grab these buddies, but I upgraded first. Now that's, that's gonna always be a, hey, is that a problem? I don't know, it's hard to say. I think I'm okay with this. We have good backline reach already with the sentient and thorned hollow on our team. Spike driver colony, it's what, endless plus one plus one infusion? It's just not it, I don't think. Yikes, skip that. That's a nothing burger of an event to have. I'm gonna take the money so I can actually do something at this steel shop, hopefully. Yeah, 20, I feel like we can beat 20 here. I feel like we can beat 20, okay. Daedalus. Thank you. By the way, thank you, Thorn Hollow. Uh, Thorn Hollow, record breaking, saving the day. We're going to play bottom with her. No real reason not to. I could do is put Train Steward in front, sacrifice my man to the ether. Pretty good, actually. It avoids the 10. Cool. And this is damage shield Daedalus. This is not. Big scary, what's it called? This is not big scary spikes Daedalus, which would kill my Mollusk Mages. So, fair enough. I am buffing Thorned Hollow, by the way. The man, making him a demon fiend makes him very confident into Relentless, which I like. Here comes the Mollusk Mage. Welcome home, my friend. We're already clearing this floor, so I'm just gonna focus on the restores here. Great. Sentient hasn't passed away yet, which is good. This is an excellent example of Glimmer being a good play. Glimmer is a good play. Now I could flash freeze the boss and I think I will. It, I'd love to put the custodian down behind Sentient, but I think the flash freeze just provides too much value to skip. I think that alone guarantees us Daedalus, which is excellent. Thank you, Glimmer, by the way. Very cool. Bomb means this is the last benefit we get from Sentient, but I'm okay with it. Yeah. Like, it's fine. She passes away. It's, you know, it could have been better. Enter second Mollusk Mage. Yes, thank you. Our Glimmer is so powerful. Maybe I Frozen Lance this away on bottom floor. The possibility of just killing this thing connects another 35 there. Although I think I think the proc is worth more actually. All good. I think we pretty confidently come out ahead here. I'm gonna now put the razor sharp in the back. Because there's nothing really I'm worried about. It doesn't matter what I do from this position. Let's just shoot this man. Save my one health, maybe it matters. Hey, look, we got it. Excellent news. And then we just Spam skills. Behold the power of 66 spikes. Okay. It's too bad we're not like worm cannon. I don't have symphony of a soul. We do pull it off though. Excellent work. Go team. Unleash the wildwood is a snap click here because it's either a rejuvenate trigger for thorn hollow or it's a top off for sentient. Otherwise I would love ice and pyre from this position as well. I think it has to be Unleashed the Wildwood, 100%. Not cold. Kalia, maybe we're talking. She has at least some scaling in Relentless in the form of Frostbite. Can I win with just Thord Hollow? I have to hit a Spikes Relic. Chased is very scary. I don't have enough regen for this. No, I would need... I need something else. Let's take Cold Kalia. I actually do think we need something else. 
Cold Kalia at least represents something. We can put her downstairs behind or mid floor behind Sentient. She's guaranteed to be safe. She can absorb multi strikes if we see them. I think we'll take Cold Kalia. She's functional here. Now, I've done a pretty good job with minus ones, actually. A lot of things are free or cheap. So I'm going to take card draw. And I'm going to feel rewarded for my decision making. Okay. That. This is greed. Pure, unadulterated greed. I am greeting. Endless Sentient is one of the most powerful... Endless Sentient is extremely hard to pull off because there's pretty much only two ways to do it. You need Remnant Pact or you need exactly this event. You need the Potion of Immortality. And she's basically Titan Sentry, more or less, essentially. Now, of course, Titan Sentry is better in a protracted combat, right? If they're walking up into the pyre, they take frostbite damage, but you have to actually like pay money and self-infuse, etc., etc. Sentient is just immediate and enabled. This also helps so much in a chase because she's going to get neutered, but I just let her die, and then she baits chased multiple turns, she dies, and then I just replay her on another floor. I really want that. Now that means I can't play Cold Kalia because she will die. Although maybe she ends up being pointless. I don't, I think here's the deal. I can sit on Thorn, I can play Thorn Hollow. If he dies, I'm already essentially losing the run on a combat. Let's hardcore greed here. Now Corrupted Cloud does mean I can't play the Mollus Mages. We're going to take the wheel. Always the wheel. This is a quad removal, at least. It's most likely going to be a five removal. It's four train stewards, and then either Wildwood Custodian or a Mollusk Mage. I think I got to decide which I want to put inside of Thorn Hollow, right? I'm leaning towards the Mollusk Mage in the Thorn Hollow. It's unlikely to be anything better. It's basically edge prior. I'm going to take the cloud. I think we get away with this. Do not click judgmental fittings you lose. And now, fortunately, we're sitting at 20 shards. And we have the ability to spike up come ring 6 and 7. So we're going to go to the right. Yes. I'm going to look at this temple here. They're going to show me a plus 30. So my glimmer is now hyped. And a tenon piercing. This is good. 30, holdover, glimmer, I'm willing to pay it. Tenon piercing into a restoration detonation is also very strong here, but I think we are going to chill. We're gonna chill, right? Just don't do anything too crazy. We get to remove two frozen lances here. We stay at 35, we feel pretty good about ourselves. I put like some plus 25s in the lad, endless. Hey, it's not what I wanted. I'm going to look for a shark, maybe. Oh my god, it's Icy Silophyte and Cold Kalia again. I'm going to sell them because of course I am. Here's a question. For anyone who ran this run the other direction and through their own reasoning made it to the Stygian banner on ring two, is this just is this just like Icy Silophyte and Cold Kalia again? Do you not even see a siren or a shark in this run at all? Or maybe the guard of the unnamed? Because I've not seen a Stygian unit other than a Sweeper or Guard of the Unnamed. Crazy. I am just going to re-roll this. Hey, you know what? Incant Armor 2 is actually great for this guy. I'll be able to incant over 25 here. I'll take it for now. Good. Sure. Why not? Armor is fine. I do want a plus 25 on him at some point. But I'll at least in can armor two, no problems. Okay, give me cultivating. Ooh, tough, explosive. Yeah, think about this. If I take out an animus of will, this run looks doomed. Doomed from this position, if I have that animus of will. I think taking the safe thorned hollow is going to be important. We're going to go bristling too. This also matters because with chaste and the potential endless, I think it matters a lot. And this also beats all of the... Rings four, five, and six 
upgraded curse enemies. So we'll take it. Okay. I'm not going to take the tendon piercing, despite the fact that I could use it. This is the cost of being safe around Broken Wheel. We move on. I don't have to aggressively remove because all these train stewards are going to pass away anyway. A lot of people died here, possibly due to the greed. Ooh, that's tough. This armor emblem is too daring, I think. We're not going to take it. This is tough, but think about it like this. I need... I don't know, who gets upgraded over... What is... 20 arm, 15 armor, what does this do? This makes upgraded crossbowmen, who are not, you know what I mean. Upgraded crossbowmen go over 20 health, which means sentient doesn't kill them and they start lashing into my thorn hollow. This is risky. This is very risky. I'm going to go to the steel shop coming up, I think, look for a plus 25 to round out the hollow and then hopefully never go to a steel shop ever again. I'd love to go to the trinket shop. Ooh, maybe I can get away with it. I think I can get away with it, actually. That trinket shop is a big play if I can get it. Cool. Sentient, bottom floor. Excellent work. Go team. Upstairs, Thorn Hollow. Do the thing. Lay a train steward. He will pass away. Okay. All right. Don't play Mollusk Mage. Bottom floor looking good. Don't play Mollusk Mage. It's important. I could maybe sacrifice one of them. I would like to Frozen Lance downstairs. I'd also like to play out the Train Steward to get him killed. We're clearing backline pretty effectively from this position. I pretty much have to click Restore here. The question is just, do I sack this Mollusk Mage and hold on to just the other one? I think one Mollusk Mage is enough, right? So we play one Mollusk Mage up here. He dies. We accept this. I play the Restore. Godspeed, brother. And then we give him the Razor Sharp here. And he incants up and starts doing okay. Okay, all right. We toss the Unleash downstairs. This is huge. Incredible. I'm 100% playing Glimmer upstairs. Okay, I'm going to hit a Restore here. The Regen trigger is very good for me. Yeah, we're going to leak some damage here. It's just going to happen. We get the Frozen Lance up here. I actually managed to push all the numbers out here upstairs. Pretty impressive. I'm going to dumpster a train steward mid-floor. He passes away. Good job. Yes. Okay. We do get some progress here with the Restoration Detonation. With a plus 30, do I need Mollusk Mages? I could hold out and just use the Wildwood Custodian for card draw here. What if I just sack him? What if I just sack my guy? I think I'm going to give up the Mollusk Mages here. I'm actually okay with this. It's going to save me a lot of health. We're going to use the Wildwood Custodian Infusion and feel pretty decent about it. This lets us do a good chunk of work here. I get to send it. I'm going to take the Razor Sharp up here. I get to play the Frozen Lance now, which is excellent. And then I drop the Glimmer. This guy in back walks, but it looks like it's just one round, so I take two damage overall. Pretty decent. Bottom floor gets unleashed, buys us a ton of time. I'm going to get Train Steward shot. Right? Train Steward passes away. I may as well... Definitely Glimmer up top. It's just smart. I leak this man and take another six. I'm okay with that. How are we looking? I'm beating you, right? Yeah, I'm beating you. Here, take a train steward. Feel good about yourself. 
This doesn't add a lot of damage, but it adds like 50 damage, actually. Good grief. Okay, fair enough. But we got that guy under 30, so I'm taking the, only the six here, which I'm okay with. Fine. Fair enough. This is as simple as restore. Now, flash freeze, it's a lot of damage. Flash freeze is a lot of damage. Actually, I think the glimmers are more damage, so let's just do that. Don't sack Wild Blue Custodian. He is our infusion here, so there's that as well. You know what else is kind of funny? Did you know? Spikes triggers strike. I'm pretty sure that's true. So when you think about it, I could turn Thorn Hollow into Titan Sentry. Kind of. I'm pretty sure that's true. I'm not going to test it, but I'm pretty sure that's true. Now, what is the light? What is the most important play I could make here? Flash Freeze represents what? This is like 3, 8, 11, 17. I think it's better to just hold over the Glimmer, honestly. We're going to slam the Glimmer here into this guy. I do think the regen provides so much value here that I should just click it. Hold. 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 Woohoo, buddy. Click nothing. 75 damage. Good enough for me. All right, my guy lives. Incredible news. We live this combat pretty confidently. Ensnare is a snap click. You may ask why the answer is simple. If I can make something hit Thorned Hollow a second time, it's good to have. So we're going to do that. Yes, one of the better cards in the game. Drain is an interesting choice. Urchin Spines. Urchin Spines into Glimmer is big numbers. That's like a Inferno, essentially. Well, I think I should grab that, huh? I'll take Urchin Spines here, sure. It's a low opportunity cost pick. Now, we also have a lot of money, which means I can look at this trinket shop and feel pretty okay about it. I get removals, which cuts a frozen lance and what? A bad restore, maybe? Interesting. We've managed to cut most of our cards. I need to decide if I'm actually keeping Cold Kalia. It's not a very good steel shop is the problem. And I am guaranteed to see one later because there are better ones on ring seven and eight. So I'm going to go to this trinket shop. What if we see a spikes relic, huh? What if I could afford it? I think we look. I think we look. Yeah, I'm doing it. Oh, oh my gosh. Petrified Crucible. I didn't think it would actually work. Also, Cuddlebeard, surprisingly dangerous pickup here for Cold Kalia. You self-infuse her, and she's actually a force to be reckoned with and relentless, right? That's plus two. She's applying five. You self-infuse, that's ten. If I had a cultivating line, that wins. But because I don't, I mean, the Petrified Crucible is a snap click. It benefits Sentient as well. Yeah, crazy good. What a hit. Okay, that feels pretty decent. Lightstone casing, by the way, also a serious consideration here. Can I afford it? I can. It's a serious consideration because making Glimmer free is nuts. It's just truly incredible. Tossing a minus one at that. Now, magic shop wise, not a ton of options. I probably don't need this removal dupe though, right? We're way ahead on removals and we'll continue to be. You know what? Now I throw away Cold Kalia, believe it or not. Caverns, Nexus Spike, or Purge. What do I have as a Nexus Spike option? What is my Nexus Spike of choice here? A double proc would be cool. Something that gives Thorned Hollow double, double rejuvenate triggers would be worthwhile. It could be like Glimmer plus what glimmer unleash it's kind of i don't know it's kind of silly getting another ensnare copy might be okay i don't know it's tough 
It's a little tough. I still get two more removals, and then I get to infuse the Thorned Hollow on Ring 6. What if I purge one of these Frozen Lances that have Consume? What if I just purge the Frozen Lance right there? Actually. Oh, I have a Vortex right here, actually. I'm actually at a point where there's just not a lot of cards left, right? At this point, I may as well cut Restores just so that I draw the other Restores faster. Hit the Unleash every turn, something like that. It's one of the nice things. I had a unit starter, and I managed to hold on for the Broken Wheel. What is the Nexus Spike here? I don't have any cheeky things, right? No Bramble Lash Glimmers in this particular run, sadly. Glimmer's not great in it anyway, because it doesn't benefit from the plus 30. So I'm looking for... I could do, like, double Razor Sharps, but that's kind of stupid. Kind of not great. What if I just Purge instead? I don't have... Yeah, I don't really have much that I want to play into here, actually. Having a Nexus Spike that's just mediocre doesn't sound particularly good. Yeah, unfortunate. I could do, like, double Restoration Detonations. That's an interesting idea. I don't think that's very good either. Double Restores is very weak. I'd rather just draw other Restores faster. What if I just purge one of my Consume Frozen Lances here? I could actually get rid of all Frozen Lances, which is kind of crazy. Because I still haven't even used these removals yet, right? I don't know. This is this is tricky. This is very tricky. What am I? What is there a spell merge that gets me something good? I'm really leaning towards like unleash plus something. Unleash glimmer is at least a double proc to the floor, which is pretty good. It's okay. I could. It's expensive. I don't want to take ember. Probably buying Lightstone Casing in order to make this Glimmer free. Because I think I want to go to the Magic Shop on Ring 6. I don't need these removals. And I don't have a great Hellvent target. Yet. Yet. Eventually, I'll have a great Hellvent target in a zero-cost holdover plus 30 Glimmer. But I really think it's just purge this Frozen Lance. I want to do it on a Consume Frozen Lance. Because having more of these is very powerful into this exactly this next combat. Yeah, sure. Okay, fair enough. Kind of weird. Okay, buy the other thing. Buy Lightstone Casing. You will thank me for this. I don't have to spend any money on removals, so I'm fine. We're now going to cut one of these Frozen Lances that isn't upgraded, and I'm going to actually drop a Restore here, believe it or not. Yeah, I'm dropping a Restore. Cool, okay. Do I take this Horde? I mean, I already hit the best relic here. What would I take? Mark of an Exile? Mark of a Champion. I think it's whatever one gives more health would be incredible. But I also think if this is like Crystal Cloak. Well, we body Crystal Cloak because spikes. Who kills me? Who threatens me here? Actually, none of the bosses threaten me, but like Harvesters of Death scare me a little. What's coming up? Enough. I'm going to be duping the Glimmer on Ring 8 for sure. It's unfortunate that the Hellvent doesn't line up with the Magic Shop here in any way, but so I can't get like three copies of that Glimmer, but we can at least get two copies of it. I'll dupe it on Ring 8, we'll buy our Steel Shop upgrade then, and then I don't know what else we unstable Vortex at that point. Maybe we have found like an Engraft or something, but I think we beat Bell for sure if I lean into this as far as I can. I don't think this Ward actually buys us anything. Okay, oh, what is it? Root Split Mask is pretty big. This is actually still one of the better ways we could spend shards. I think we're strong enough to take it. I mean, I'll take, what, Sigiled Seaweed? Tempered Talisman is kind of an interesting option as well, actually. It brings our Glimmers up to 35. It gives me Restoration Detonation value. Restores go to 15 or 5. I think Sigiled Seaweed is just objectively stronger, though. It clocks out so many things yeah i already have a plus 30 in the card that i want 
So we'll take the seaweed here. I'm good with it. All right, cool. We'll move on. I think seaweed is a good pickup for those shards. And I feel pretty strong here. As long as I don't completely screw myself over. Do not take this heaven seal. We chill. We chill. It is Harpy who should fully pass away. I'm going to play Sentient Coldcalia Middle. Coldcalia, I think, is dead to me because Petrified Crucible means that we actually have a viable Thorned Hollow run somehow. So we're going to play Coldcalia Middle because I wish to get the Collector. We're going to Flash Freeze in the back. And I'm just going to blast both of these enemies. Fine. Look at that. We get the Collector. Incredible. Play Thorned Hollow upstairs. I'm going to Razor Sharp Edge up here. Yes. I am going to Unleash up here. I'm going to hold over the Glimmer, obviously, I think. Yes. Good. Cold Kalia will die, and I'm okay with it. Well, actually, pretty good. Don't kill Custodian. He's actually my infusion. Restoration Detonation is pretty potent here, actually, in middle. It just straight up murders something. Playing that downstairs. I do want to play Rejuvenate Triggers up top. I'm going to... I don't want to take this hit, so I'm just going to go ahead and Glimmer. We're looking pretty good, thanks to Petrified Crucible. I love it. Thank you very much. Bottom floor is the scary one, I think. We lose Cold Kalia, and I think I'm okay with it. Yeah, Urchin Spines can go downstairs, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to go ahead and hit that Razor Sharp up top. Restore. I'm going to put Crane Steward down. I want him to pass away. I could keep Cold Kalia alive another round. I really actually think I should. Yeah, I'm okay with it. This keeps Cold Kalia around one more go. One more again, which I think is worthwhile. Yeah, we just... Okay. We glimmer up top. Interesting. What if I just Razor Sharp first? Play the cards we know we want to play. I kind of want this guy to pass away. What if I just ensnare him then? True. Just ensnare that guy. Now, mid-floor, with a single Restoration Detonation, I end the tank in front, which is just massive it's just an excellent play i kind of want the train steward to die what if i just kill mid floor just fully end it i'm gonna actually do that cool and then i can what flash freeze upstairs fine cool and the train steward's gone no big deal great news now we funnel everything into the upstairs just 100 percent now, is Glimmer better or worse than Restores? I actually think Restores are superior here because the regen procs are a thing. Six by six. We have enough life on Sentient that we're doing tons of damage here. I think looking at my deck, Cold Kalia will die. And then while we Custodian becomes an infusion for Thorned Hollow, I think we just click Restores upstairs. We drop Glimmer here. Cold Kalia will pass away. Excellent work. Play the Ensnare. Restoration, Restore upstairs. Spikes, 90 damage per hit. This is actually perfect. I want Cold Kalia to die. 100% correct. Good. Let's go ahead and Restoration Detonation. I'm actually going to play the Razor Sharp. Every little 10 swing there matters a bunch. This is kind of perfect. It's a lot of damage. She gets purged. And we easy win up here. Easy win. I even see the Glimmer again. Thank you. And Wildwood Custodian is our last unit. Excellent work. Okay, cool. All right. Preserved Thorns. Second Ensnare. Honestly, every Ensnare here is good. I can just make my own... Root Split Mask, Ensnare is fine. Spike of the Stygian, Guardian's Amulet, Drain. As long as I can keep my floors topped off, and they do pick up an Endless here, I think we're good to chill. 
This should be very strong. We get Give Me Vial of Tears. This is free procs on everything. 100%. Give me Immortality Potion. 100%. We're so sad. We're so good after that. Endless Sentient is nuts. I'm going to go left here, and we're going to put in that minus one, and our magic, our glimmer goes off the off the charts. Split Anvil. Is there ever a Split Anvil target here? No. Rationing Scales? I kind of like my Pyre Health, by the way, so I think I'll just take the Split Anvil. Maybe we see a payout? Ramble Lash or something? I don't know. Oh, but wait, what if it's 60 damage Glimmer? I actually don't think it's that, for sure. We're just going to make it cheap. The, it being free lets me make a second one and confidently deliver 60 plus damage AoE to this floor. Whereas if I take a plus 30 here, I pretty much have to put minus ones in every other card in my deck. Now, is that actually possible? I have so few units and cards and stuff. I do want to do my infusion now, by the way. Get this last Wildwood Custodian out of there. I actually can wait because he's going to play him on the floor. It's the same thing. Do it on ring seven. Yeah, we'll just do it on ring seven. It's literally the same thing. He just goes and lives behind Thorned Hollow. Fine. Actually, I might put him behind Sentient and then elevator Sentient in front of Thorned Hollow for Relentless, which is kind of hilarious. Okay, so then the real question becomes, with removals coming up, I think I can actually make every card in my deck free. I put a minus one in one of these. I... Right? Well, there's only... This is the last one, right? I guess I don't need the removals. I just go to the other magic shop, and then what? I just spend money on minus ones. If the only thing I'm spending money on is a plus 60 glimmer, that can't be wrong, right? I think I've convinced myself. We've actually gone to enough magic shops in this run that I think this works out. Okay, all right, we'll make restore cheap. And then we'll make plus 60 Glimmer, and we'll make two of those in the run. I mean, how do you lose, right? How does it go wrong? Okay. We don't need a 20 consume. I've been able to remove Frozen Lances. We're just going to re-roll. Cool. I don't care about any of these. Minus one into a Restore. And then... Actually, I'm going to minus one the Unleash here. I could theoretically still cut some of these Restores... But it does come down to density questions, right? I need to have enough restores to actually spam rejuvenate triggers. Let's make the unleash free here, though. That's a good one. And then let's commit the plus 30 to Glimmer for 60 AoE damage. This also makes a floor wipe with urchin spines, which is pretty cool, as it turns out. Send it. I don't need removals. We chill and we go blast fell here. I'm duping this thing for 20 shards on ring eight. Correct. That's 85. All right, even the horde plus that, that gets me exactly 100. This is not a run where I feel like we can really mess around too much. We move on. I think we blast fell though. We probably pick up steam from this position. I no longer have to play it safe. I have both of Malika's relics, etc., etc. We get Mr. Thorned Hollow. He lands. Excellent work. Sentient just chills downstairs. Like, oh no, you killed my Sentient. I'm not afraid, right? It's good. Let's hit the boss. We'll 20 consume upstairs. And I am going to razor sharp our friend. It's good to do. This is kind of fun. Yeah, give me that Urchin Spines into the boss here, please. Hey, hey, hey. I'm actually going to just go ahead and drop Unleash on bottom floor. I'm good with that. And then we load up the upstairs. Okay. I think you ride up to the top here. Good, good, excellent. Glimmer, strong. 
We're gonna Wildwood Custodian downstairs, our buddy. He passes away to the sweep. Whoops. Well, heck. Sorry, champ. Anyway, we're gonna blast this floor for 186. We get the Razor Sharp up here. Everything is free at this point, so that's great. It's okay, we'll get him back next turn, right? He's endless. It's free, it's actually okay. Thanks, champ. Very cool. We just ensnare something upstairs. This lets me freely cast these spells because I really kind of just don't care about pretty much any of this nonsense. Ensnare him again, whatever. I'm gonna glimmer downstairs and just keep hitting the boss whenever I can, for the moment anyway. All right, here we go, here we go. Goodbye, Wildwood Custodian, my hero. You did your best. I get to play out everything upstairs. We get the Razor Sharp. I may as well proc up top. I'm gonna kill this mid floor and send the boss to the Shadow Realm. Every little bit of damage I can do here is worthwhile, so, okay. Wildwood Custodian, he's back. My guy. Here's an Unleash downstairs, cool. We're still gonna work on upstairs. I just hit the boss. Right? Yeah, right. Every one of these 60 damage that I'm, 60s that I'm hitting into the boss here is just worthwhile. There's a lot of incoming damage that I'm unhappy about taking. How dare you? Ooh, actually, with Glimmer, and Flash Freeze, I save 12 health. Incredible news. We're currently doing 168 spikes, which I do think is fast enough to win. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that seems fast enough to win. Play the cards you know you wanna play upstairs. I wanna generate procs that are valuable. Flash Freeze the boss because fear exists. I feel it. Go ahead and razor sharp. I trade two health for two armor. I think it's fair. I could glimmer up here and save eight. I do want to save eight. We're at the point where I want to every little bit matters upstairs. Cool. I just literally elevator sentient. 100% we elevator sentient here. That's kind of funny. I don't think I've ever actually done that in a run quite like this. I Wildwood Custodian actually does nothing here. So let's just click the glimmer up top. We are killing this person with a lot of spikes. Custodian is not necessary at this point. Great. And now we live, of course, but we just drop Sentient in front and this kind of cruises, right? She will eventually pass away. She's not very durable, but she still deals 40 damage a hit here, which is not bad. 280, I mean, I think that that's beating bosses, so. Cycle of life, it's so slow, it's just not good. Spreading spores, spreading spores, no, absolutely not. Clutter my deck, I want procs. If spreading spores did one, one heal at the same time, this would be sick. If it at least applied one heal, maybe if it also cost one, it's a little slow, I don't know. I think we skipped these. Unfortunate, but okay. I'll do it. Card draw? We're all in agreement that it's card draw, right? Yes. Cool, let's go. Excellent. Make everything cheap. I go left. I go left. We do the infusion. We ready the missiles. The minus ones are big. I might as well take pyre health. Yeah, fair enough. There's a lot of things we could have done here, but I'm actually pretty pleased with this. Just ignore steel shops, always feels kind of good. Hey, you know what? Bristling three, let's do it. All good, 120 health. That holds the line. It's got endless, it can't go wrong. The minus ones are the most important part of this. Make, restore, free. But do the infusion before you forget. Hey there, Wildwood Custodian. Welcome to the club. Bam, there he is. Now we just basically, it's really unfortunate we didn't see cultivating there. Just showing me explosive all the way down. This run would have been doomed if I had gone Animus of Will. It's actually kind of interesting, right? I think Thorned Hollow is a very safe early game pick, 
but usually how I use this unit is I play him and then I pivot off of him. He saves me through like ring five and by that point I've gotten something that wins otherwise. It's very rare that I pick him to get me through ring five and I'm going all in because he's nuts in fact. 110 does not frighten me, I think we're okay. I'm gonna make a restore free. I think I'm also gonna make a flash freeze free. I might remove flash freeze, by the way, but this glimmer is just objectively superior. I think it's actually on the chopping block for my next removal, which is kind of funny. Make restore free here, it's good. It's the whole thing I'm talking about. Every card is free. I will re-roll and make this card free. What's my holdover? Holdover in snare? Why, absolutely I'll click Holdover and Snare. Holdover and Snare is ridiculous. This guarantees that I can force mini bosses to completely punch my man repeatedly until they die. Incredible. Now we, that has removed the one loss condition I could think of. I think we actually have this, right? I think we've got it, which is awesome to see. Now, 10 in Piercing Restoration Detonation. That is very strong. Is that strong enough for me to consider it? Yes, it is. Let me tell you, 20 Piercing. This, if you get a full heal off of this, you kill all Steel Wings out of the gate. That's one of the things that scares your friend, Spike's friends, right? Because they don't attack. This is worth it. That is a worthwhile pick. We don't need to do anything else fancy to it. It just kind of chills there, but... We'll go to 120. I'm fine with that. We move on. Cool. I think we have this. Mark of Invasion. This is actually kind of scary, right? Well, Endless. I have Endless. I'm not afraid. If I die on ring on floor one, I just play him again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Immortality Potion. Why not? Also, anything that gets silenced just kind of loses. So here's my upstairs. Cool, I'm gonna play him. It looks bad. It's fine. They'll live, right? We made it work. Look at that, incredible. Sentient. Play Sentient bottom because no one wants to deal with purifiers that don't get silenced by the power and the might of Sigiled Seaweed. I'm I'm still, still net positive here to play Razor Sharp on my friend. And I shoot one of the ones middle just to get him out of there. Cool. Okay, fine. Great news. Well done. Excellent work. Anyway, here's Glimmer. 60 damage. Amazing. Let's go ahead and play the ensnares up top for now. Then I click the Glimmer. Good. And then I razor sharp here. Bottom floor. Exa example A. Steel Wings passes away. Incredible news. Let me just play this Frozen Lance here. I think we easily get out of here now. We got it. Behold, Sentient destroys Purifier. Very powerful. Very good. The game is strong when you play it right. Anyway, at this point, I'm pretty much just going to spam Restores upstairs. Actually, kill that guy in one, which is pretty cool. Sure. Sentient's getting healed by this vial of tears as well. You know, this is a very, very strong setup. Hey, look, I killed another Steel Wings. Incredible news. Thank you, Sentient. Very cool. Glimmer. Haha. <laughs> I get to save the Urchin Spines, which is pretty fun, too. I actually think this wins, right? It's kind of crazy, but I think this gets it. I super think it does, actually, which is very fun. It's very fun when the silly idea that, you know, probably shouldn't win, does win. I'm a big fan, actually. I almost healed the enemy. Let's just generate spikes upstairs, honestly. There's no reason to do anything else. We just click these cards... Whatever. Incants are worth it at this point. My goal here is essentially... Oh, my guy. Oh, Sigiled Seaweed is too strong. Completely destroys the lunatic. Can't believe it. Anyway, 
Get sent, goon. You stand no chance. I'm too powerful. Glimmer. Incredible. I actually think we're very strong right now. I mean, this guy rolled very poorly against me. Bam. I will continue to play in snares, and I don't think anyone can stop me. We're currently doing 240s. I think between the Glimmers and the Spikes friend, we super win. I actually think Just Sentient wins this pretty confidently, but yeah, absolutely. Give him the Flash Freeze, load him up. Honestly, we're looking pretty good here, right? This looks pretty good. My guy gets the kill with his attack. I get all 400 gold, excellent. Awake? No, at this point, I'm planning on making another Glimmer because it's just straight up so powerful. We just skip unless that's, unless it's incredible. I don't want to talk about it. Skip. No, none of those are incredible. We go to Hellvent. Incredible Hellvent. Give me a plus 25. I have enough money to reroll that and look for a plus 25. Root Split Mask. Whoa, buddy. Whoa, buddy. Snap, click, root split mask. This is crazy. You know what? I'm going to give my guy a large stone. Fine. You don't You don't want to give me a plus 25? I will buy him a large stone. You know what? This, this only means I can't really play sentient in front anymore. Is that actually important? Like, am I actually scared of... Am I going to need to elevate or sentient into chaste? Maybe? Oh, that's actually worth considering. Chased is the scariest thing here. Okay, you got me. I'll play. I'll take the other Incant Armor 2 instead. I was about to be spiteful. The important thing to take away is we're going to have only 120 here, which I think is an 11 damage boss. It's important because it means my Mr. 15 Helther does not immediately pass away. So we're going to we're going to play it safe because Chaste is scary in this line and we'll take Incan Armor 2. Nice thing is that the Incan Armor 2 does not hijack Ooh, I get jack strips. It does not hijack anything that Chaste could remove cuz he doesn't cut armor. Which is good. I'm going to drop Flash Freeze. At this point, I no longer care about it. It's just objectively worse than Glimmer in basically every way. And I'm dropping the other Frozen Lance. In fact, actually, I could probably drop an Ensnare, but the Ensnare is a, literally a free card. We're just going to cut Frozen Lance. And I'm going to put Razor Sharps where they go, pretty much. Every other card here is nuts. Okay. Go to the Hellvent. Make another Glimmer, because this card is insanely good. Yes. Cool, we did it, right? We actually did it. I have 17 cards in my deck, and I am drawing seven. This is crazy good. This run is so strong right now. It's interesting. I'm really interested to see where people faltered. I'm willing to bet that people hunted multi-strike. I think a lot of people... Don't give Thorn Hollow the, the justice he deserves. Anyway, I'm buying Jack Strips because I don't need my money for anything. I'm not. If I re-roll this, I can't afford anything. So here, Jack Strips, have fun. And do not take this horde. We are scared of mini boss health and divinity damage. So we just move on. 120 out of 100, and we chill. Also, Chase is scary, so don't make him scarier. I think, and I'll talk about this more in the in the run summary, however this pans out. But I genuinely believe that people don't give Horned Hollow the time of day, and they should. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and immediately Urchin Spines here, I think, and take this hit on the boss where I can. It kills the entire wave. So, it kills the entire wave, does like 180, yeah, fine. Okay. All right, yeah, cut my guy. Unfortunate, but fine. Ooh, I do lose a spell, a card here. Because Ember Drain did not get silenced. That's okay. We just click the ensnare button, and then we just continue 
to invest in our friend, our Lord and Savior, Thorned Hollow. Let's do it, bud. I am going to struggle a bit, but that's okay. Sentient will eventually die, and honestly, that's great for me. When she passes away, that's good, right? It's excellent because it means, it means I get to replay her because she's getting cut is the thing. Ah, uh, it's a really good silence. She dies on this turn, great news. All right, she actually did an excellent job there, by the way, anyone keeping track? I also avoid the Ember Drain here, which is pretty cool by just killing him. All right, we do get cut upstairs. It's unfortunate, it is what it is. Sentient comes back downstairs. There you go, well done. We're just locking enemies down. I am gonna be double glimmering here. We actually clear the whole floor, which is kind of surprising. Armor is pretty tight, actually. I'm very happy about that. That's scaling into Relentless, and it should force her to, yeah, fight Sentient a little bit more, which is very important for this run. Please fight Sentient. Fun fact, in case you didn't know, if this guy weren't silenced, his strike effect happens after he takes spike damage, so he would die and then not actually be able to do anything to me. Oh man, the fact that it hit Sentient twice there is just so good. Incredible. This is very powerful. And we also got so lucky. Chased, honestly, just treated us so well. Now we just straight up elevator chased. And I go ahead and drop one in snare downstairs and that guy's dead. And we just chill, right? I just click cards and we save some health wherever possible. This this health is just super good. Elevator time. Yeah, sorry, bud. You're going to have a bad day, as it turns out. The Razor Sharps, by the way, actually pretty good. Don't underestimate them, in fact. Cool. And then we just drop Sentient in front, and I think we're guaranteed to win. We actually win automatically, but when you get to play the Sentient, this was something you couldn't have predicted right? You, you couldn't have known, right? And it's actually super important that you couldn't have known. We we took the Incant Armor 2 instead of the Large Stone specifically because you're just, you can't say for sure. You don't know. 342 is enough to win. I think we definitely beat Divinity here pretty confidently. Cool. So a trickier run that required some finesse in the early game and the mid game. And I think I think it required a bold pick. I'm gonna play Sentient Middle. There's a reason for this. I want the Divinity to hit me twice. One, those 160s will add up. Yeah, guy's doing 11 in here, which kind of I expected. Let's go ahead and drop the Urchin Spines. I, I'm gonna save that for a scary wave, actually. Let's save it for a scary wave. Hold over and snare, no reason not to click the card, right? All right, mid floor is fine. We're gonna just sink some numbers into the boss here. Thank you, restoration detonation. Click the restores. Click pretty much everything here. I need to make these numbers as big as possible, as fast as possible. Sentient straight up murders that floor. Incredible news. So good. Are you okay, Sentient? There you go, there's a full heal. Why not, have fun. We just hold over that ensnare. We drop double glimmers. I'm saving the urchin spines possibly for a scary boss. Or there are some waves that I could be a little concerned about. Ah, uh, sigiled seaweed. My one my one true enemy chains the sighted. You did not hit him. Tragic. That's okay. Get to go ahead and just drop big numbers here. I'm gonna root split that friend as well. Remember, I do think it is super correct still to go ahead and do as much as we can. Sentient does pass away, but kills a bunch of enemies, which is pretty okay with me. Sentient, go live mid-floor. Thank you very much. Extremely cool. We double glimmer middle. 
Or top, rather. Hit him. Do the thing. Do the thing. Clear basically the entire floor. We get out the weight of contrition. Chillin', in fact. I can force this boss to fight Sentient a few more times. Probably worth it, actually, right? I think it's probably good. Well, I kind of don't want it generating curses constantly. All right, we'll just go ahead and chill. We will cruise at this point. Okay, fine. Great job. Sentient just straight up is going to murder some of these guys. All good. Yeah, this is it. So we're going to go ahead and drop the urchin spines here for big glimmer energy. Huge. Play the weight of contrition. Play the other glimmer. We actually kill this guy straight up. No questions asked. Very good. We incant for armor. Looking pretty solid here, actually. Sentient still alive somehow. Okay, she passes away here. It's actually perfect, though, because it means she avoids giving any Ember Drain. Well done, Sentient. You did it. I could actually... Oh, no, never mind. We're just going to kill a man with it. Excellent. Just kill a guy. Incredible news. And now, at this point, if I just double ensnare the last knight, I never even have to fight him. So, that's kind of fun. <laughs> it's just one of those nice perks of Monster Train, right? I do take an Ember Drain for it, but I'm not mad about it, right? It's good. Goodbye, Sentient. All fine. Yeah, this man, presently, now never reaches the top floor. Good stuff. We are going to fully invest upstairs. I think this super matters. I actually think I'm going to give a Sentient the Unleash because it puts 160 into the boss here worth it cool good we don't get any drain there no problem anything i ensnare on mid floor by the way never fights my boss or my my boss <laughs> never fights my character so let's go ahead and ensnare out the only two creatures that survive on that floor we actually can fully ignore downstairs because sigiled seaweed is absolutely cracked and then we just load up the upstairs to the best of our ability. And with a hundred and something life, I'm pretty confident we're okay here, yeah? Yeah, we win. Good job. Go team. Sentient. Here you go, champ. I believe in you. I believe in the you that wins, Sentient. Great work. Go team. Cool. Yeah. Incant armor ended up being very important. We would have won, by the way, with just a bunch of plus 25s in this guy anyway. Would have been fine. We only needed 41 health into Relentless. So we win either way, but I think this does work out in our favor by staying at 120. So all chill. Cool. Great job. Two turns, man passes away. Got the W. All right. Thank you, Thorn Hollow. Very cool. So I think this really just kind of comes down to familiarity we'll put it that way familiarity with a variety of lines and willingness to try weird stuff sometimes a pretty okay score we didn't leak anything but it's also not a very high score either but it's fine let's go to the challenge let's see who lost i'm not gonna look at mine real quick let's look at everyone else's i'm willing to bet no one picked thorn hollow friend wow Wow, that's so okay. So there was a siren. Okay, so I mean, you didn't see a multi strike, and I guess you didn't. I didn't honestly look at these last steel shops, so I wouldn't be able to know. I know the one on an eight has a large stone and an endless. I don't think you see a multi strike, which is fair. I actually was considering this rail spike thing, but it ended up in a different order. It's actually pretty good, by the way. This is a good card, but it does lose in relentless. Yeah, see, we, we lost in Relentless here, you can see, because it did a lot of boss damage and passed away. This has no staying power, is the problem. This does a lot better with Cultivating. I think you can still win here. Let me think about this. You're going to have a struggle with Divinity Waves with this setup, though. This is a real struggle fiesta on Divinity Waves. I think you have to do something like Cold Cuddle Cuddlebeard, Siren of the Sea Infusion... 
and that at least generates enough that you don't die. I also think the Cold Kalia is actually really important for Relentless, especially against things like Fell. You know, you don't have many turns. You need to be making them count. I think, yeah, I genuinely think you need to do Siren of the Sea into Cold Kalia. And I do think an arm in armor two is correct. And then you just find you grab that cuddle beard that I perched that I skipped in exchange for the petrified hand, whatever it was, the petrified crucible. That's the word. And with razor sharps on a sweeper, I think you can make a really scary line out of it. I think the part that really makes this tough is the lack of any cultivating at any point in the run. So so there's that. I also think you need to play very aggressively into these floors and accept pyre damage, which is where Cold Kelly is going to help a lot too, right? Because think about this. Cold Kelly puts a lot of frostbite down and that frostbite ticks when they walk up. You need to be elevatoring your floors when you have immortality potion to guarantee you don't lose on fell or something. I probably play two floors. I probably set up middle. Everyone dies on middle relentless. Play them again on top floor. It's good. Siren of the Sea Infusion works out perfectly for that because it's just raw stats. That's how you skate this by. I think you can win with the Stygian line, right? Where you never go Thorn Hollow, you never trust the man. Yeah, I think so. I'm willing to bet the other losses here are similar. Oof, Guard of the Unnamed, wounded. I feel, I feel bad just seeing it. Siren of the Sea. I don't know why you would do that. This is a great example of why do you have Guard when you have Sentient. I mean, obviously Guard can generate more armor and survivability, but you already have something. And the fact that this slows you down by a turn is more detrimental than just figuring out how to use Sentient herself. Another automatic rail spikes. I actually, I do think the rail spikes are very good here, by the way. I think I'm glad to see that they're getting picked up. I missed them because of the order that I did them in, but I would have taken them otherwise. Just trust me on that. I would have. In the end, I would have been like, what? It would have been Urshan Spines and then just send it with like an 80 damage rail spike. You see the split anvil eventually anyway, which makes it actually pretty darn good. So I, I don't want to say it's a mistake on my part. I don't think that this is a necessary element of my run. I do think this helps a lot when you have the Siren of the Sea set up, though. That said, I do think you might you might be more prone to going this approach if you don't have the Thorned Hollow, right? Because it's not like you have an overstacked unit, so. OK, let's see. Anything else? Who's else? Who else is here? Oof. Spike driver colony. I don't think that's ever going to help you here. You had the right idea, though. The cold Kalia is big. Animus of speed, not the right infusion I would have picked, but you have absolutely, you're so close to the right idea here. I think, yeah, dump a large stone in this friend, put the siren of the sea, wherever the heck that was, into this thing. You don't need the quick, right? You're okay letting sentient getting smacked around. She's got a lot of life. She'll be fine. You eventually get an endless. It'll be okay. But, but yeah. I kind of see how this can falter into ring four, though. You've kind of got nothing going on here otherwise. Let me tell you, though, I think people are underestimating the holdover glimmer angle, right? It might be that there are no other holdovers other than the one on ring one, which is kind of funny. No, there is. There has to be. I remember I picked an ensnare holdover. So I guess I made it. That's on ring like six or seven, though, which is further than anyone else made it. So I, I really think that my line is very safe. I think the Petrified Crucible is a nuts high roll, but think about all the other options here, right? Maybe you see a multi-strike. You could put multi-strike in Thorn Hollow and Gnarled Root him, and he actually clears floors combined with the Glimmer. Root Split Mask is huge. The combo of Root Split Mask plus double and snares. I never even fought the second mini boss. You can do that to other units as well. Right? Maybe you see a double stack. With the lightstone casing, you can go hold over double stack minus one in snare, and this thing is now locking down multiple units, right? That card is so powerful. There's a reason this card shows up in my top 10 cards of the game. Just click it when you see it. You're, you're never going to feel bad having in snare. It's great. Urchin Spine's big payout. Huge shout out to Massive Glimmer, though. This is essentially Inferno that procs Rejuvenate and heals my floor. It's incredible. I would, would click it again, as a matter of fact. 
random restoration detonation with a 10 and piercing. You saw this payoff on Divinity. You saw this payoff on Ring 7. It's just really strong. It's a really good card. I don't want to say it's the best card, but if you have something that has a lot of life and is liable to take hits, it's worth having this. I'm glad to have had it. The rest of this, I mean, everything else is gone. Train stewards are gone. I don't have a single Frozen Lance anymore. This run is lean, and we are strong. So I think I think really the lesson learned here, trust your Thorn Hollow. But I think what really comes down to it, notice how none of these people went left on Ring 2. The only reason I know that is because they would have had an Animus of Will at least, right? Siren of the Sea infused with Animus of Will, also a winning line, by the way. Double of those behind Sentient, you heal the floor, you scale, you incant, it wins. So either way, the most important part of this run that I can impart as knowledge, if you have a good holdover target and you have a good minus one targets in your opener, you probably want to consider going to that magic shop if it's got an Awoken Banner. Awoken Banners are stronger in general from this point of view. Remember, we also had double Razor Sharps there. You can win with just Shattered Shell and a Holdover Razor Sharp Edge. Maybe you see an X5 and you make five minus one Razor Sharps. You got it, right? All you have to do then is you take that, what is it? the cycle of life to give him some health, right? Because you need to be able to feed him health in order to survive the minus twos. But the pieces are all there in the run for that to work out. So uh, I still, however, do think that with our setup and the fact that I grabbed the Thorn Hollow, Holdover Glimmer was nuts. This was really good. So anyway, we played it safe. Runs a little on the long side. I think it was tricky enough that it warrants it, but I'm glad to have brought out the win. So that brings us up to 56 wins on the series. Go team. Hopefully this was informative. So yeah, hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.